So we're going to hit the, the, the three points. We're going to hit them broadly. I got a talk that will be putting up um, sometime in the future uh, about the Goldbar conundrum, but let's just talk about it here. I call it the Goldbar conundrum because, um, as I was saying before, uh, when it came to, I was learning about uh, investing in stocks and trading stocks and options and bonds. And gold is one of my favorite things to trade. I, I really love gold because it's a weird, it's a weird product. It's both a commodity because we use it to build things, and it's also a currency. You can use it. To, you actually spend gold in certain places and certain things, and it's been around for thousands of years. And I thought to myself, well, how does one sell gold? Like if I had a bar of gold, a uh, twenty-four carat, five hundred ounce, pure gold. How if I had a lot of these, how would I go about selling them? And then as I did research of how uh, mines sell gold and how mints sell, sell gold, I realized, oh my God, this, this whole industry here, right? So the, let's say you have these gold bars and you, think, you have to think to yourself, well, what problem does gold solve, right? What is the problem that gold solves? Well, the problem that gold solves are threefold. One, it's used as a, as a material for um, industrialization process. It's used to make uh, jewelry. And it's also any ornate thing. And it's also used as a store of wealth, right? If you put money into, a, into gold, it actually stores the, the, the purchasing power of your gold. So, uh, sorry, it stores the purchasing power of your money. And then over time, it can even appreciate in value. So I think I mentioned this before. You put a, a, $1,000 um, in cash in the ground and you dig it up in uh, 50 years. Well, you can't buy $1,000 worth of things with that anymore. But if you put $1,000 worth of gold in the ground and you dig it up, you'll still be able to buy $1,000 worth of things in the future, 10 years from now. Because gold acts differently than currency. It doesn't devalue over time. So I thought this was very interesting. So, okay, who are these people who want it? Fine, it's the whole industrialization process. is uh, 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 factories and plants and all kinds of people who need gold in order to process that. Okay. And then you have uh, people who want jewelry. But the people buying jewelry, they're usually buying smaller amounts of gold. They're not going to need 500 ounces, which retails for like $500,000 American. So jewelers don't necessarily need that. For bars of gold, it's really for a store of wealth. You sell those to mint or people who want to store a large amount of money. All right. So then you, then you have the problem of you got to find these people. Then you have to do your research. And, but after you find these people, let's say you find the mints and you find the people who want to store their, their, their money. You think of yourself, you just go up to them and go, here, I have a, a bar of gold. Do you want to buy it? I have tons of them. You can, get them, you can take them off, off my hands. Well, they're going to ask you all kinds of questions, but all the, all the questions will boil down to three specific ones. They'll come up all the time. One, why should I buy your gold versus someone else's gold? Two, how do I know you're selling me real gold and not a gold brick, which is gold hollowed out with a brick inside, like right? fake gold? And three, why are you selling gold as opposed to doing anything else with your life? It's strange. These three questions come up again and again. And these all are, uh, are parallel to the three principles that I like to talk about, value, reputation, and transparency. All right, so let's take them one by one. First, why should I buy your gold versus someone else's? As an entrepreneur, this is your pitch, right? What is the pitch you have? You're trying to solve a problem, now you're gonna pitch this person. So you can't just say, well, it's a store of wealth, because this person already knows it's a store of wealth. That's why they're there, right? You have to add additional value to what you're doing. You might say, well, I will um, store the gold for you. So the cost that you have to store your gold and to insure it, well, I'll cover that cost for you. Oh, someone might say, okay, that's better than someone else's. You might say that transporting the gold from my place to your place is closer than someone else's. So you might be in the same city, whereas the, the other person selling gold might be in another country. So there's all kinds of logistics and um, insurance they have to pay for that. So they might think that that's worthwhile. Um, you might say that your gold is, um, is uh, uh, humanely sourced, right? No one has been hurt, and that adds, adds value. No one has been displaced because of this gold. They might add value. Whatever it is, you, you're going to have to pitch. You're going to have to show how you've added value on top of the gold. 
right? It's not just the gold alone. You got to add value on top of it, right? And as an entrepreneur, you got to do the same thing in your business, right? You have, you're trying to solve this problem and that for somebody, if it's a, a, a new widget or if it's a, a new type of service or they need information, whatever it is, you're trying to solve this problem the person has, but there's all kinds of other people solving the same problem. So you've got, you can't just come at it with that it solve your problem. You got to add value on top of that. And that's part of what you need to do as an entrepreneur. You have to constantly be analyzing what is the problem you're solving so that you can always see what is the next value you can add to it. I find that way too many businesses don't think about this, right? You have to, here's the bottom line. You have to assume that the problem that you think you're solving, that you're not solving it nearly as well as you think. That the problem there's an infinite level of value you can add, an infinite level of uh, improvement that you can bring to solving this problem, and you're not even close. If you have that mentality, you'll always be in this process of researching what people think and how to get better at it. So anyone who uses your product already, you're gonna be constantly mining them for information, not just a survey at the end of their purchase, but really follow up with them over time in order to see, okay, did it solve their problem and where were the pain points? So that's for value. There's always more to discover about solving the problem than you think. And we could talk about more of that later, but that's enough for now.